Hey everyone, welcome to From the Depths. I'm Minty, and this is episode one of the Battleship Brawl, season four. That's right, we're back. We're going back into it. I've been away for a while, but, uh, well, I'm back. You know, hard done to me to say, but I'm saying it again anyway. So, in this first match, in this corner, we have the HMS Overlord by Thompson. Very pretty looking, uh, large, very battleshipy battleship. With the, uh, an entire battery of guns in between the superstructure, which is neat. And three uh, tri cannons there. They don't. The, the guns haven't uh, filled out to their actual gauge size yet. Uh, let me. And now we're blinded by the explosion. I was just trying to get the guns to actually look like they're supposed to, but you know, the game isn't cooperating. Whatever. We'll get to that explosion stuff here in a second. I just want to give a good look at this ship. It's a very nice looking ship. There's a lot of little details to look at. You got these little barrels here. Got a helicopter pad up here. A little mini chopper. Looks like that's actually on a... Is that actually on a spin block? I don't think it, it won't actually take off because it's part of the ship, but, you know. It's still pretty cool. Okay, we do have some clipping going on here, but... Um, clipping solely due to the elevation or depression of barrels is acceptable in most cases. This isn't, like, blatantly abusing that, so that's fine. Like, if this gun were facing the enemy, there wouldn't be an issue. Because the, the, the actual barrels of the gun would be going, or rest in here, so they aren't actually clipping into anything. It's just the drawing. Also doing it a little bit here, too. Not terribly, though. I think that's just a visual clip. That's not even an actual clip. Uh, got a, you know, some radar stuff up here. Conning tower, I think. Oh, here's the funnel. With some smoke coming out. Points if you have you actually have your exhaust coming out of here, which doesn't look like it. Just a smoke generator. We got the front battery, which we can't really currently see because of the, you know, extremely obtrusive fiery explosion thing. I mean, it looks cool. I just wish you could, you know, see things when it happens. It's like, yeah, a little bit blinding. Alright, so we'll stop messing around with that. Oh, it looks like it had... Oh, no. Never mind. I thought it was gonna... I thought it had a, uh, a faux rudder back here as well. A very nice looking ship by Thompson. I very much, uh, enjoy seeing his ships. I have a little anchor here, too, I saw. Where to go? Yeah, there it is. But it will be facing... Oh. <laughs> Another ship that also fired and has kind of blocked off the vision of itself here. You know what? Let's... Whoops. Did not mean to take a screenshot. Wrong button. Go ahead. Let that fade. Let that fade. Come on. Go away, Smoke. Before the sh before the, Tom before the Thompson shells arrive. <laughs> okay. So now we can actually see this ship. Might go back over and take a look at the very front of the Overlord over there. This is the uh, the curse of the or it's the return of the curse of the HMS Obdurateness by Brandoman. Yes, you hear me sighing because of the uh, that has become a thing. You guys really enjoy giving me these long uh, names to deal with, and now I can't like because. For anybody who's watched any other ones, there is The Curse of Oyashiro-sama by the Brisby Mouse. Um, and he has iteratively named his his ship the same way, which annoys me to no end because now I can't just refer to it as The Curse because there are two ships with curse in its name. So I'm going to have to figure out some shorthand for these two. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Also, the reflections are pretty cool, but they don't really make sense. Like, why am I seeing reflections of... The, uh, the bridge and turrets and stuff, like, off of the side of the ship. Like, because it's not in the water, that's the side of the ship is making that reflection. <laughs> it's weird. But that's, you know, that's nothing against Brangerman's ship here, that's just the new FTD graphics. Good ol' from the depths. Got two smokestacks here. Ooh, that looks like it actually has the, uh, 
Yep, that is the actual exhaust coming out of the fun funnels. Bonus aesthetic points. <laughs> Not really. I mean, you can, you guys can decide for yourselves, but it, it, that doesn't make a difference to me. It's not a huge difference, but I mean, hey, you know, the small little details count. Not as, not a whole lot as much, bleh, not as much to see on this ship as there is on Thompson's. Not quite as much detail. Still a nice looking ship. I like the turrets. Sort of uh, uh, futuristic looking to me, in a way. It's got a battery of four triple barrel turrets and two smaller secondary, or two double barrel secondaries it looks like. So the uh, the obdurateness is a bit outgunned, it seems, and is a little bit smaller. So it will probably take less. Oh, the shells! Like that was almost a perfect pause. Like the shells are just passing each other through the air. That's 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 a cool shot. I know they have health, but can like can shells collide? I don't even know. Probably not. That'd be kind of cool if they could, though. And then let's real quick now that the smoke and stuff is dissipated, we'll get a. a one final quick look at the front of uh, Thompson's ship here. It's only fair. So everybody can admire the beauty of both ships equally. Uh, because one thing that's going to be a little bit different about this tournament is the beauty votes start now. Uh, rather than waiting until the ship retires, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a... Uh, um, it's a Google Forms survey. For each of, for both of these ships, whatever whatever ships are participating in the video, they will uh, they will have a link to a survey specifically for them to use for Hall of Beauty voting, rather than where you can vote yes or no, like we did with the comments before. But I'm just not going to do it with the comments because one, I keep forgetting about those, and two, this is this lets me set it up so that it can be done more long term and get more votes in, rather than just getting votes when the ship retires. Like, it just, it makes it, it, it's just a better situation, in my opinion. But anyway, enough of me blathering on. Uh, I've introduced the ships, let's get this battle underway. Let's see who, uh, takes the, the, uh, worst of the first assault. Ooh, open word. Taking some shots straight to the bridge, it looked like there. It didn't actually do much, though. Uh, let's check on the, uh, the obdurateness. Seems to, have both ships at 99%. Neither ship really seeming to, to mind any damage. That, ooh, that was a direct hit to that secondary. That's going to leave a mark. Oof, and this, this uh, main battery turret just took a hit to its uh, outer turret, or its outer barrel. That gun is disabled, but if the turret turns around and starts firing, the other two guns should be okay. We got the, uh, the Overlord here making a turn. Took another hit to the bridge. Seems like it took a shot to the the, uh, the turret here as well. Knocked out two of the guns. Also did some gauge damage to the middle. Gun. Looks like those other guns took some damage as well. Some shells flying. Ooh, shots incoming. Ooh. That's getting down in there. Getting inside the ship. Pouring out the inside of the Overlord. But not getting to the turret just yet. If it keeps hitting in that area though, it won't take but a few Shells. Overlord down to 96.7 percent. Obdurateness at 96.3. It's a very close battle so far. Oh, that turret just took a shot straight to the face. Did you guys see that? Right in underneath the turret. That gun is done. That I highly doubt that gun will come back online in this battle. Badly hurt. Which is bad news for the obdurateness because it needs to it needs to get some turning on turning going because the overlord is full broadsiding it and just raining shells on it and it have a lot more damage output than this single uh main battery gun that the obdurateness has that is going to add up though the overlord is you know it's a bigger ship which means it's just generally less dense which means it will take more damage per hit usually at least as far as hit point damage goes but its guns are surviving much better, and that is going to be the deciding factor of this battle as it continues on. As you can see, the obdurateness now has fallen to 94%. Overlord's still 94, because it's just putting out way, way more shells at this point. 
I mean, it had an advantage. Oh, and the other front gun takes a hit. The Obdurate currently has no weapons that uh, can fire on the Overlord. It's got this one turret back here with a damaged barrel in the middle, but it needs to turn to bring that gun to bear. Looks like the Obdurate is maybe going in for a ram. If it does that, that's probably not a terrible idea. The Obdurateness, like I said, is a much more dense ship. Must, mo uh, most likely more heavily armored. So, the especially running into a, the side of the Overlord, the Overlord would probably take more damage from that ram than the Obdurateness will. But the Overlord seems to be uh, moving a little bit too fast for the Obdurateness to really catch it. It might catch the very tail end, tail end, but... It is not uh, going to get a, get a solid ram in here. I mean, it looks, it really looks like that that's what the Obdurateness is trying to do, is trying to catch up and ram it. Oh, now it's turning the other way. It's had enough of getting uh, its bow shelled. I mean, the Obdurateness is taking these hits like a champ. I mean, it has been hit a lot. And not really... Oh, that turret just got popped off completely. That is it for that. Yeah, like, that gun is not coming up, coming back. Well, the turret capped it. I guess it isn't completely popped. You can still see some of the, the guts down in there. But you're not repairing that. Not with the materials we've got in this battle. Well, the Obdurateness finally got a turret gun on target. Those were some heavily cramped shells that, yeah, blew some sizable holes in the stern of the Overlord here, but you're not doing any critical damage there. That ship is going to keep fighting just as well as it has been. And right now it is way overpowering the Obdurateness. Obdurateness has just been kind of, uh, just kind of wrecked, like, it's holding together well, but its guns are gone, it has lost a lot of blocks, and it's still floating and fighting, but it is hurt. I'm trying to think of the term for when a ship gets in this condition, but it's not coming to mind. Where it's, it's basically a floating wreck, where it can still float and survive but can't really fight effectively. I know there's a term for that. Or maybe there isn't. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that's entirely possible. But man, the Overlord is just raining those shells and it has a lot of guns. What it, it, how many does it have again? I forget. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tri-barrel turrets. With 21 guns. Quite an expansive armament there. And they're spread over at, spread throughout a large hull. Which is what's uh, giving it the redundancy to keep fighting that the obdurateness just does not have. Oh, it looks like the Obdurateness took some more barrel damage. I wonder, I don't know if those other two barrels are still functional. Yep, yeah, well, one of them is. I don't know if that middle barrel is still functional. We'll see in a moment. I don't think it is. Oh, wait, no. Of course, as soon as I say that, it reloads and fires. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, that is not functional anymore. <laughs> uh, I brought attention to it, so of course it got shot. And the Obdurateness is also just about out of materials, so it is not going to be able to bring any of its weapons back online. The uh, only hope it has at this point is for the Overlord to sail out of bounds and get itself disqualified. But right now, if anybody's going to get disqualified from something like that, it's going to be the Obdurateness, because it's it's sailing at a uh, difficult angle to get itself turned back around from. But we do have a bit of a bigger distance uh, distance limit 
in this tournament, so it might be able to make it. Regardless, it is down to 80.1% health, 79%. So, and it has no guns left and no materials to repair itself with, so as long as the Overlord doesn't screw up and uh, throw away the match, it has won. There is nothing the Obdurateness can do. It's getting absolutely hammered. anymore just kind of waiting for the obdurateness to die at this point which is a little cruel and sad to say but you know just calling it like it is <laughs> meanwhile the overlord is doing some repairs it doesn't have much in the way of repair bots it seems but it is uh piecing itself back together i wonder if it'll actually be able to fix these uh these damaged guns here not that it really needs to Oh, Obdurateness is having a bit of buoyancy problems. It's getting really low in the water there. It gets much lower. It's going to get a 80% sinking despawn. Shells are just relentless. Each shell doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Like, it does damage, but it doesn't do you know, as much as a cram cannon could. But there's just so many of them. Death by a thousand cuts. Oh wait, I think we've actually got an 80% sinking despawn here. Yeah, the 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 obdurateness is 80% sinking. It's not actually showing the message though, which is interesting. Normally it's it's or wait maybe I might be misremembering. Maybe the tournament mod never showed that. I can't remember. It's been way too long. Regardless, it's good to be back, and that was a pretty good fight. Obdurateness had a little bit of, uh... You can either say it is the Obdurateness having a little bit of bad luck in all of its guns getting hit so quickly, or, you know, good luck for the Overlord, or just good gunnery. But this tournament, as the most before it, is a best two out of three. So we will go ahead and uh, get this reset. Get this started. We will get round two underway. Let's go. There's immediate volleys from both ships. Usually, you know, the first volleys from ships, they just kind of miss. Because of acceleration and uh, incorrect aim. But that, that was not a miss. That was not a miss on either side. Both sides landed. I'd say that, you know, the first volley usually misses and then both ships land hits with their first volley. Let's see how the Overlord's doing. Can't see through the smoke. Kind of wish I could like either tone down or remove or just make the smoke clouds disappear faster. Oh, these rear oh, these guns back here are taking some good hits. Like really knocking down the Overlord's weaponry early on this time. That will make a big difference in how this second round can go. It's like you can't win without guns. Oh, that was another good shot. Does not look like it quite made it. Nope, did not quite penetrate the turret. If it keeps firing in that area, it will. Oh, superstructure taking a hit there. That shell went over. Overlord bringing a few more guns to bear now. It's getting its broadside on. Getting all those guns pointed at its enemy. Obdurateness seems to be doing all right. Has not taken any gun hits yet, though now that I've said that, you know, the next volley will probably take out a gun. Called it! <laughs> That's just how this works. Like, every single tournament. I mention something, and then, you know, something happens to, like, like the game can hear me. Uh, oh, yep, and that guy just took some more.
more hits, and now, like, the Obdurateness' frontal weaponry have basically been disabled once more. Now, if it would turn the other direction, like, go left, not right, go left, bring your rear guns to bear, then you might be able to, like, like, you've got a lead. Had a lead. turn the other direction like, bring those rear guns to bear like before they get hit you can make a comp you know that can completely change how this battle is going and too late <laughs> well at least for one of the guns It's getting at least a, a, you know, one fully functional gun on target, but it is getting, uh, getting slammed pretty hard again, but it is still in the lead, despite the significant difference in firepower between these two ships. The Operatus is just tough, an extremely durable ship that it is just, it is not taking damage. Not quickly, anyway. Plus, uh, a lot of the Overlord's guns have been uh, damaged from that, that early barrage. Ooh, those shells were aiming right for that turret, but it looks like the turret absorbed the impact. Did not allow the turret to be disabled. Like, if this gun goes down, so do Obdurateness' chances of winning this round. Oh, and it's, it's just, it's putting that turret in such an exposed position right now. Like those shells are just coming in from straight on the rear. All they have to do is target something, anything that's in that the plane of that gun behind it. And that turret will take some really bad hits. Oh, <laughs> I was I was half expecting the smoke to clear and that gun to just be dead. <laughs> oh, that was close. Oh, Overlord is raining shells in. Oh, that secondary gun got one volley off, and then it took a hit and went down. <laughs> Let's go check on the Overlord here. Yeah, you can see there's just a lot more gun damage this time around. That is making a uh, pretty big difference in this. Like, the Obdurateness is actually still in the lead. It has 94%... Or wait, yeah, the Obdurateness has 94% to the Overlord's 93. Though that is not enough to claim a victory. You have to have a 5% difference in health, otherwise it's a draw. But even if they maintain this spread, when the when the Obdurateness got that got down to like eight, you know 78%, it got too low in the water and got an 80% in sinking despawn. Whereas the Overlord will probably take a lot more damage to get to that point. So even though. The Obdurateness is uh, ahead in hit points. Oh, the Obdurateness is also repairing a lot. I just noticed it's pretty much out of materials. Or no, it is out of materials for repair. So that's how it was maintaining its lead. The repairs were helping out. But now it's out of materials, so what it has to work with is... You know, what it has right now is all it has to work with for the rest of the battle. And that is likely going to, to cause it to lose that lead. Has it run out of ammo or something? Like, why are the, the guns so decent? It's weird. It fired, like, one shell. Now it's firing two. I don't know why the guns are so decent. But, yeah, I see the Overlord is closing that gap now that the Obdurateness doesn't have materials to repair with. This gun is basically disabled now. That is one less turret firing up the Obdurateness, evening up the playing field, but it's just it, be, having only a single operating turret when your opponent has multiple turrets available is just a huge disadvantage. But it is not over yet. If the Obdurateness can manage to keep knocking out guns, like 
it could pull back, pull this back. It's a very close match between. Uh, I like how there's uh, two different design philosophies as far as like hull goes, where you've got the smaller, more dense, more durable hull facing off against the bigger, flimsier, but more uh, redundant hull. And they are pretty closely matched. Like, this is a pretty close battle. Overlord has taken the lead and is gaining the advantage now that the uh, Obdurateness is out of materials to repair with. But, uh... It's, it, you know, like, this has been a really good battle. It's been really fun to watch. And it's just... I, I love how the Obdurateness is taking so many hits. And it's just like, I don't care. Like, I bet you if the if like, if the number of hits flipped, the Overlord would be shredded. Like, it would be so hurt if it had taken as many hits as the Obdurateness has. You gotta give the Obdurateness credit for its uh, tenacity here. Not an easy ship to do. Overlord is more of a, uh, a glass cannon approach. I mean, not, it's not it's not really a glass cannon. Like, it can take some hits, but it uh, it's focusing more on pumping out shells and getting a high uh, you know damage per minute rather than being able to absorb hits and having big you know smaller uh, smaller number but bigger but more powerful shells. It's like every time the Obdurateness hits it, 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 it takes out a ton. Like it makes some pretty decent holes every time it hits. It just doesn't hit often enough. This turret is just surviving. Oh, well, it took some it took some barrel damage. Shell must have detonated nearby. That gun just refusing to give up. Unfortunately, this isn't an anime. You can't win by just refusing to lose. <laughs> yeah, the Obdurateness is almost 5% under the Overlord now. So it is looking like even if this does go to the 10 minute uh, timer, which it might, uh, the Overlord may be able to claim the victory if this pace keeps up. It's got two and a half minutes to knock off, like, uh, trying to math. Oh, there it is. That's 5% right there. It just passed the 5% threshold. I keep getting, uh, I keep thinking that the Overlord stats on the left side there are the Obdurateness stats because they both start with O. And so I see the O and I'm like, wait, <laughs> which ship is which? Gah. I'm out of practice. Don't worry, we'll be getting back into it. I plan on doing, uh... I don't know if it'll be quite daily videos like it was before, but it's gonna be pretty close. I'm not gonna guarantee you that I do a video every single day, but I'm gonna be... Like, I want to do this again. I'm interested in getting these videos out. I want to do this again. This is fun for me. So it will be happening frequently. Yep, it looks like the Overlord has uh, secured itself a victory here. Oh, the turret just took a hit. Yeah, the Obdurateness has no guns left. It has 0% chance of winning at this point. Overlord took an extra second of EQ time at some point. I didn't notice when that happened, but... Yeah, there is... Uh, I mean, the Obdurateness could theoretically go over there and sit on the Overlord and drown it, but the Overlord's a larger ship uh, with buoyancy to it. That'd be a little bit hard to accomplish, especially in the minute and ten seconds left in the battle. It's theoretically possible. But it is... Uh, Extremely unlikely. 
Yep, and at this point, now that there, it, it is physically impossible for the Overlord to time out and get disqualified, because there's just not enough, enough time left in the battle for it to happen, I'm going to go ahead and call this battle here in favor of the, uh, the Overlord, just to, you know, to save some time here. Because at this point, we're just kind of, it's just kind of like, you know, watching somebody beat the crap out of somebody else who they've already, you know, they knocked them down and now they're just kind of kicking them while they're down. <laughs> so, congratulations, Thompson. You're the debut battle of the Battleship Brawl Season 4 uh, goes to you. It is your victory. You win. So, uh, thanks a lot, folks. Thanks for watching. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I do have a Discord server now. Uh, where you can talk about from the depths and tournaments and you know all kinds of different stuff um that will be linked in the description as well as well as the hall of beauty votes for both of these ships from here on out every vessel like both vessels will have a link to their specific um hall of beauty uh google docs forum thing or forum thing um in every single battle and that and the votes will stay open until one week after the ship retires and then the, then the votes will close and that will be the final Hall of Beauty rating for that ship. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the battlefield.